Hello and welcome to today's video. So in this one, I'm going to be talking about my initial first impressions of the Elgu Neptune 3, which is an FDM printer and I really like it so far. Now, this perspective is going to be coming from a primarily a resin 3D printer's perspective. So hopefully that'll give you an idea as to why I picked it up and my thoughts on it so far, maybe some of the pros and cons I've experienced you know, in this very initial early stages. So I've had the Elgu Neptune 3 for about a week now, and so far I've had a really good time with it, which came to me as quite a surprise. I did have a previous FDM printer, which I had for about two weeks, didn't get on with it. Just, I don't know if there's a fault with the bed leveling, and I just, I couldn't get anywhere near decent results from it. Most things came off as a failed print, so I returned it, and I stuck with my resin 3D prints. Now, you might be wondering why have I chosen to go with something like a filament printer, and the main reason is to be able to print off a lot of these sort of things here, this like, I guess, wargaming terrain and larger pieces that will take up less resin. Now, obviously, you can achieve things like this on a resin 3D printer, but there are some pros and cons to that, so we'll cover those off later in the video. So, just for a pointer, the Neptune 3 retails at the moment, I picked up for about £170, I think it's about $209. That was in the early bird pre-order stage, I believe it has gone up a little bit now, it will go up again at the actual launch for it. It took quite a while to actually arrive, so it did arrive last week. I was very happy to get my hands on it. And as soon as it arrived, I unboxed it, and I got to the bit that I was dreading, which is the actual putting the thing together. Now, in the Neptune 2S, which is the printer that I had previously, it took me forever because there's so many fiddly bits to put together. But actually, the Neptune 3 pretty much comes pre-assembled, so everything in the base was already assembled, and like the main kind of unit, the, I don't know, whatever you're gonna call it, the big arms and stuff like that was already put together, so I literally had to screw in like, four screws and it was ready to print and I was, I was crazy surprised. It took me about 10 minutes to get the whole thing ready to print and I was good to go. It has auto bed leveling as well, which I really appreciate because I hated that on the 2S. I just struggled massively with it. And again, I don't know if my unit was faulty with that one, so I'm not too sure if that was the issue. But with this, literally you press a button, it does all the bed leveling. You just make sure that you can get your paper underneath there and you'll be familiar with that if you're coming from a resin 3D printer. Just make sure you've got just enough friction between like the nozzle and the print bed. And then you're ready to hit print and just start printing off whatever you want. You should probably do a test print first, but you know what? Me being me, I just kind of went in with some of these walls came off quite nicely. I'm really happy with them. So yeah, that was good to go with some more, I guess, experimental things. So like I said at the beginning of the video, the reason I went with a FDM printer is because I wanted to print off bigger things. I do a lot of resin 3D printed miniatures and I absolutely love them. And I have done some resin 3D printed terrain, but there are issues with that and things that I dislike about that this was hopefully gonna give me better results with. So the big pro or the big win, I guess, for a filament printer is you've got a much, much larger print bed. So straight off the bat, it's a much bigger space to work with. Unlike a lot of obviously resin 3D printers where it's a smaller print bed and a smaller print plate. So you don't have to kind of contest with like chopping bits up and stuff like that. So that's a nice to have. You also don't have to print off things with supports. Some things do need supports obviously because physics, but things like this, I haven't used any supports on anything I've printed so far. So you literally press print, come back a little while later or a long time later, we'll get onto that. And you have something ready to go. You literally pull it off the print bed and you need to do a bit of cleanup, but yeah, it is good to go. No dipping it into alcohol, no scrubbing, no cleaners, nothing like that, no curing. It's just good to start playing with and painting. So really, really appreciate that. On a resin 3D printer by comparison, obviously you've got to do all the cleanup, and everything else. You normally have to slice up your models as well to get them to fit onto the print bed. And then there's a the whole thing of like hollowing it out and making sure that you've got the air holes in there so you don't get too much suction and make sure you've got the support so it prints correctly and doesn't pull it off. And it just, for me, it's always been a bit of a mess. I can print off terrain, but it's never been a good experience for me. It's always just been a pain and a lot of hoops to jump through that I just, I don't like to do. Whereas this seems to give me that option of being able to print off a lot of terrain, things like this that are also gonna be more durable as well. So I'm not gonna have too many broken parts and I don't have to worry too much. So that all sounds great, doesn't it? But in comparison to a Resin 3D printer, the first thing I will say straight off the bat is the quality is just, it's not as good as a resin 3D printer. And you can get some fantastic resin 3D printers at a budget that print off some amazing details. They're not bad, and they are probably a little bit better than I was expecting. Things like this fountain, for example, it looks good. And once you start putting some primer on there and then put some paint on there, it starts to really cover it up. And there's things that you can do to cover up a lot of those layer lines. You can either put some resin over it if you wanted to, like an epoxy, again, a thicker primer. There's loads of things that you can experiment with that I'll get into in future. But at the moment, this is literally just not playing with the settings and how prints have come off the print bed. And I've been so far pretty impressed with it. Also as well, 
they're pretty durable. So you don't have to worry about the brittleness of resin. And no matter what you do, and no matter what resins you use, you are always gonna experience that. And with things like this, it's not too much of an issue because they're pretty strong when it comes to resin. But this, you know, you can knock it about and I don't have to worry too much. So I'm really happy with that. But going back to the quality on this, I think they look good enough for a terrain piece, for things like walls, for things like dungeon tiles and everything else. They look good enough. No one's going to look at it and go, okay, that doesn't look like a house. It looks like a house. There's, there's nothing wrong with it, really. There are some bits that you need to clean up, and you can see those layer lines. Let's not try and run away from that. The quality isn't as good as a resin, but they still look pretty damn good. The other downside of a filament printer is the time it takes to actually print it off. I've been spoiled by the Mars 3. It prints off astronomically quickly. But things like this, just this bottom part here, I think I took about 12 hours to get the roof done. It's about 12 hours. So to get a house printed, it's about a 24 hour print time, which, yeah, I guess it depends how patient you are. For me, I'm not too bothered because it's literally going to go in my garage. I'm going to hit print, leave it, then come back like the next day to get my prints off of it and not worry too much. But if you're wanting something relatively quickly, it's not going to do it. So just bear that in mind. So they're just some of the general pros and cons of like having a filament printer versus just your resin printer. And the reasons why I've gone for something like this, you can also print off more practical things as well. So resin 3D print is great, I guess, if you want to have something that looks fantastic. But with this, you can print off, I guess, like there's a painting rack that I want to print off. That's just one example. There's loads of like household things that you could print off. And again, because your filament is pretty strong and these don't really show any signs of just snapping, they bend instead, I guess, just like a traditional plastic. You can do a lot of things that would actually be useful around the house rather than, I guess, more decorative or tabletop friendly. So I'm really impressed with that. The Neptune 3 itself it feels robust, it feels strong. It's easy to use. It's got a decent sized screen as well. So literally you have this little micro SD card, pop it into your PC, slice everything, pop it onto the memory card and then pop it into the, uh, the printer itself, hit print and you're good to go. I really like just the construction of it. It feels like it's got that Elegoo heft to it. Considering what a budget printer it is, it does a really good job. Like I said, it's not going to compare to some of my resin 3D prints. There's absolutely no way. Like the tops of these tiles, you can see layer height and stuff like that in there but I'm not too bothered about it for these terrain pieces. If you're doing something like tabletop miniatures, then absolutely you want to be going for a resin 3D printer, but to have an extra tool in your arsenal that you can print off all this extra cool stuff to build out your battlefield or your terrain tables or whatever, this is fantastic. I'm really excited by it. Another thing I was really impressed with was just, I guess the margin of error in terms of like these, these are um, these like kind of dungeon walls and you just kind of slot them all in. And yeah, they slot, perfectly straight out without me having to do anything to it. I didn't have to fidget with it or mess about with settings. So you've got all this customization, whereas on the resin 3D printers, I'm just to get that shrinkage or warping and taking apart and kind of, you know, just putting in and out that often sounds awful, but yeah, doing that over and over on like resin, it would start to chip away at it and probably snap and having these kind of spinner bits here as well. I wouldn't want to rely on it. So I've been really impressed with the quality and the strength I'm getting from these. So that's a lot of ramblings about this printer and why I've gone for a filament printer. And I suppose in that first week, this isn't a full review because I just haven't had enough time with it and things could potentially go wrong or discover things that really annoy me. But so far in that first week of owning it, I've had a really good time with it. I've been so surprised with how easy it was just to kind of get it out of the box, put it together and get printing. Like I said, within like 10 minutes it was set up and then within another five minutes I had the bed leveled and everything else was ready just to hit print. And I was crazy impressed by how easy that process was, especially considering my previous experience with the Neptune 2S. I haven't done any tinkering with the settings either. This is literally just using the Neptune 2S profile in Cura I'm getting more to print off and so far I've got some pretty good results. There's definitely room for improvement but I'm not overly bothered again because they're terrain pieces but it looks fantastic. So if you are after like a budget printer that could go alongside some flat resin 3D printer I think it's a pretty good show. Now bear in mind I am primarily a resin 3D printer so I don't know the market as well for things like filament printers so there might be something out there that's just like 10 times better but at this price point it's a pretty budget friendly printer in my opinion to get stuff like this done and yeah i'm really really impressed just one word of caution when you're putting your filaments on there just be careful and make sure you actually hold down the end of the spool because i didn't and it just went twang around it and then got a little bit tangled and i had to babysit it for ages until i figured out i'd made a stupid mistake don't be sean don't be stupid so that's it for this video. I'll have some more 
in-depth stuff coming up in the future about like different terrain. I'll do a couple of things like, um, I guess, filament printed terrain versus something like a resonance 3D printed terrain. So any ideas that you guys want me to explore, anything you want me to cover, let me know in the comments below. Have you picked up a Neptune 3? And if you have, let me know any tips or just tips in general for FDM 3D printing because that really helped me out and helped the community out as well. It's a nice extra thing to have for that tabletop gaming and I can't wait to print off basically the whole city of Grayscale. It's got to happen. And if someone out there wants to craft me a Sean Mare to go into a, <laughs> a 3D printed town, that'd be fantastic as well. Hope you've enjoyed that video. If you have, hit like and subscribe button and come along for some more content in the future. And also head along to the Discord channel where we talk all things 3D printing, wargaming, painting, all of that awesome stuff. If you really want to help the channel, head on over to my Patreon. It just helps me to keep making these videos. In the meantime, stay safe and I'll see you soon. Bye.